what we're going to start with is a review of part writing and the rules that we have been talking about. So, we have here what's given. We're looking for four parts. We have our Roman numeral analysis below. It's asking for a six chord. In the key of E minor, the six chord is C, E, G. We double the C for all root position triads unless it is the six chord in a deceptive resolution, which means a six chord preceded by five. This is a six chord preceded by one, therefore it is not a deceptive resolution. So we need two C's, E, G. We have one C, we have another C. We need E and G. We then look for common tones. Well, G, here's a G, and here's an E. That's about as smooth voice leading as you could possibly hope for. Then, we look at our next chord, which is a four chord in the key of E minor, E, F sharp, G, A. So it's an A chord, A, C, E, A, C, E. Root position, we need two A's. We've got one, cross that off, we've got a C. That means I need an E and an A. Do I have any options for a common tone? Yes, right here in the alto, I can maintain the common tone. And then this G can move by step, I love moving by step, to an A. Now one thing you can do is, when you maintain common tones, you don't need to check for any parallel anythings. It's not going to happen, because it's oblique motion. Not possible. Here I move up by step, and I look, is there any, anything else that's moving up by step? No. So I'm not going to have any problems. When you maintain common tones and move by step, it's hard to have part writing errors unless you move everything up by step or everything down by step. So I can check for my part writing errors as I go. I go back to my one chord, E, E, G, B. I have an E, I have a G. That means I need an E and a B. Common tone in the alto, E, yes, boring but that's okay. Right now we're going for smooth voice leading. We then need a B, so this can step up again. Is there any other voice? Well, the bass is jumping up, the soprano is jumping down. There's, there's not gonna be parallels with what we wrote. So we are fine there. And then our five chord, in the key of E minor is B, D sharp, and do not forget, in a five chord, which is major, you must raise the leading tone. So it is a D sharp, and then F sharp, which is in our key signature, two Bs. We have a B, we have an F sharp. Therefore, we need a D sharp and a B. Well, here in the tenor, we get a common tone here, and then by step, to our D sharp, and you must put the sharp in. If you just write a D natural, you've written a minor five chord. We then look to see if this is moving down by step, so is the soprano. So we look at the interval between the soprano and the alto, we see that it is a third. There's no problem with parallel thirds. Parallel thirds actually sound really wonderful. So we check there and we make sure we don't have any errors. I don't need to be checking the bass and soprano because that was given as part of the exercise. So I'm only checking what I'm doing with filling in the inner voices. Finally, back to our one chord, E, E, G, B. I have both E's, so I can cross those off. And then I need a G and I need a B. Now here, I could, you could, you could mistakenly say, oh, I'm going to maintain the common tone. I'm writing this, but it's a mistake. I'm going to write the B here because that's a common tone. And then I'm going to write the G. And the problem is, where are you going to put the G? You're like, well, I'm going to put it right here. That's a problem. Because now, 
the alto voice is lower than the tenor voice. That's called voice crossing. We are not allowed to do that. Yes, Bach every now and then does voice crossing. We're not Bach yet. Soon. So, we can't do that. And you think to yourself, well, isn't there, and, and can, on one chord, can't we like leave out a note, triple the root, and leave out a note? The answer is yes, but the note you leave out is the fifth, not the third. We have to have a G. We must have a G. So, since you can't put it here, we're going to put it here. And then you're in the position of saying, do I want to have the tripled root and have the alto go to an E as well? Or do I want to have it jump down to the G? I'm sorry, to the B. My mistake. So we could do this. Tripled root and a third. That would be acceptable. You could also move the alto to a B. Now, one thing that should go through your mind is that that D sharp is the leading tone. The leading tone is a, is a tendency tone that wants to resolve to time. And if it's in an outer voice, the soprano or, or the bass, it must resolve to time. Now this is not an outer voice. This is an inner voice. So we have the option. And so our choice is, don't resolve the tendency tone and have a complete chord, or resolve the tendency tone and have an incomplete chord. There's pros and cons on either choice. My personal preference, I like complete chords. But if I really was in a voice leading mood and wanted smooth voice leading, I would move that D sharp back up to the E. Another reason I prefer to jump down is I can give at least the alto one more note to sing that's not the same as before. After you have done this, you should play it on the piano. So let me play for you. Now let's say your piano skills aren't good, good enough to play it all together. You can play one voice at a time. You can play the bass voice. You can play the soprano by itself. both together if you can say, oh, well, I can do one, let's do both together. And then if you keep practicing and you eventually want to get to the point where you can play all four voices, it doesn't have to be in time, it doesn't have to be fast, but if you can play, still not done because you want to tie this to your ear. You then go through and play all four voices and sing each voice. So you might start by saying I'm going to sing the soprano part. <laughs> Excuse me. singing along with it and develop my ear. And then I do it again. I sing the alto part. I hop myself up. I go. understand how those voice leading principles work. So you, you can really, if you really want to go deep and have a thorough understanding, that's what you would do.
Our next example, G major. This one, we only want three voices. So we're just going to have, for this example, soprano, alto, and bass. Soprano, alto, bass. With three voice, we don't have doublings normally. We usually have one, three, five, or one, one, three. If we leave something out, sometimes it'll be the fifth for voice leading purposes. G, G, B, that's an example right off the bat where we have root, root, third. We've left out the fifth. The five chord is D, F sharp, A. We have the D, the A, we need the F sharp. Now, we have an option here. We can go back to the G and have that doubled root and a third, or we can jump down and make a complete chord. I will always choose complete chord when I have an option. That's always my preference. Uh, I think the fuller harmonies are very nice. In, in general, if you're looking for historical national trends, the Italians would go for voice leading, and the Germans would go for the full chord. Four chord in the key of G major is C, E, G. We have two C's, which means we can't have a complete chord. We'll have to leave out the G, which means we need the E right there. Two chord is A, C, E. The E is a nice common tone, we can do that. D, F sharp, A. We have the D, A, here's our F sharp. G, B, and again, I go for the complete chord with the D. Let's listen to what that sounds like. So we have sounds great. So that's a nice review of part writing. We are now switching gears. This is no longer part writing. This is something that's easy to confuse because you have to remember if you're going from a transposed written key for an instrument to concert key or concert key to the transposed instrument. One of the skills that we want, now that we know how to part right, we are now in a position where if someone says to us, could you make an arrangement of this piece for bassoon, B flat trumpet, E flat alto sax, and a French horn? We can say, yeah, but we could write some four part harmony for those instruments. But now what we need to know, we can, we can do it this way. But how do we write it for those individual instruments? Not all of those instruments are in the same key. And what that means is when a flute player sees a C written on their, on their music paper, they'll play a note, and it will sound differently than the clarinet player who plays the C on their instrument. It won't sound the same because they're in a different key. So right here, this is our concert or C instruments. Here is our typical B flat instruments, E flat instruments, F instruments. It is possible for things to be in other keys like D or A. And what that means is that the written note doesn't sound like the same written note for an instrument in a different key. This can be very confusing, but it's, but it's not as confusing as it might seem at first. So, if you have a transposing instrument, let's say this is the written key, what the, the written music for that instrument. If that reads the note C, what does it sound like in the concert key? So, transposed, written for the transposed instrument, what does it sound like? 
and the sounding is a concert. So a concert instrument is also the piano. Um, so we've been doing everything based on the piano. A flute player who's in the concert key, when they see a C, it's going to sound like a C. All of our concert instruments, the note that's written for them in their written key sounds that way. Sounds in the concert key. There's no transposition for any of these instruments. There's no transposition in terms of pitch. Whereas our B flat instruments, if a B flat instrument has written on their music, a trumpet player sees a C written on their music, or a clarinet player, or a tenor saxophone player, it sounds for the piano like a B flat. Hence the name B flat instrument. So whatever key your instrument is, that's what this is going to be. When they play a C, it sounds like X, whatever X is, and X being the key the instrument is in. So if you have clarinet in D, and the clarinet in D reads the note C, it sounds like a D, because that's the name of the instrument. Here's where things can get tricky. You're going from what's written for that instrument to what it sounds like in a concert key. So let's say that this little melody here is written for B flat clarinet. And I want you to rewrite it for the oboe player. That's a concert instrument. So if the B flat clarinet player had a C, it would turn into a B flat. So to go from the written to concert, you have to analyze that interval. The interval, C to B flat, is down a major second. So you apply that formula to what I have written, including the key signature. So let's say this key signature is G major, or we can say one sharp. What is major second down from G? The answer is F. F has one flat. So our concert key will be in the key of F. You now have two options. You can move every note down a major second, or you can analyze it in terms of scale degrees in the original key. One, four, three, five. And then you can just do the same thing, 1, 4, 3, 5, in the new key. That's the method I recommend. So, in the key of F major, 1, 4, 3, 5. I have now written this for my oboe player. And I can say clarinet and oboe, they're, they, they, now they're going to play the exact same thing. Now, let's keep this, this as a challenge moving forward. Let's say instead, this was not B flat clarinet. This was E flat alto sax. Well, that means when the E flat alto sax sees a C written on their music, the saxophone player is going to Play the C. It's going to sound like an E flat. What is that intervallic relationship? The answer is down a major six. So we're taking this and we're going to move it down here. So our key signature, we're going from G major down a major six. This is where all that stuff we've talked about before is really helpful. We can do it quickly. The answer is a B flat. So B 
B-flat. So B-flat major is our key. And we just do one, four, three, one. One, four, three, I'm sorry, one, four, three, five. And that's how it would be written for an alpha saxophone. Now, you might say, you said down a major six, so how come you wrote it higher? Well, there's going to be other factors we have to actually consider. We have to consider what clef each of the instruments uses, because not all of them use treble clef. What octave things get transposed into, because not every instrument plays at the same pitch level. So just imagine, if you will, we have a violin and a bass. They're both concert instruments, meaning when they play a C, it sounds like a C. Obviously, they're not playing in the same octave. The larger instruments play much lower. So you have to kind of keep that factor in mind, what octave things will be put into. And for the alto saxophone, the alto saxophone is actually a middle-sized instrument. So if I'm going from uh, actually, sorry, I did this, so going from this to this, this would not be the correct octave. This would be this would be an octave too high. So you could 8VB, or you could write it down the octave, but you're using a lot of ledger lines if you're writing that F, which is okay. We can handle that. So you could put 8VB, which is something that you're allowed to do, or just write it down here, B flat, four, three, and then one, two, three ledger lines. So that's what it would sound like for a concert instrument. So this was written for the alto sax. This is what it would be for a concert instrument. This begs another question, which is range. Range is the lowest to highest note an instrument can play. If you write this note for a flute player, they cannot play it. Flute does not play F, three legs of lines below the staff. You can't, you can't say, oh, I'm gonna have my flute player play with my alto saxophone. Like, if the alto saxophone is playing high, up here, then the flute could maybe play along. But not if the alto saxophone is playing low. So, when we're dealing with instrument transposition, we have to know about how the transposed key relates to concert key. In other words, the pitch. We have to know what clef is being used, what octave it transposed into, and then the range of each instrument. Luckily, all of this information is easily found online. What I want to cover with you is the general methods that you use to understand that information. So if we go here, we have these main categories. These are the most common categories that instruments are in, keys they're in. And we've talked about how you can take an instrument that's a transposed instrument and change it into a concert key. What if we were to have to do it the opposite way? Instead of saying this is for E flat alto saxophone, let's say it is now, this is concert. And I want to write it for E flat alto saxophone. So I'm going the opposite direction. So instead of 
the written transpose key to concert. I'm saying, here's concert. I want it transposed. So we have to analyze the intervals again. E flat to C. What is that interval? Well, it's not down a major six. It would be up a major six. This is again, this is this formula works just for getting the pitch. It doesn't help you with determining what octave. So if you remember, I wrote it the first time and I wrote it where it was nice and easy in the staff, and I was like, ah, we caught that. That's in the wrong octave. We need to transpose that. So if we just do the pitch, and don't worry about anything else. We start by transposing the key. The key, G major, up a major six. G, A, B, C, D, E. E major is our answer. So you can see how different this is. You can't use that anymore. We must put it in the key of E major. And then we do one, four, three, five in that key. So one is an E. Four, three, five. So we we got the right pitches. Let's look at clef. All of these instruments use the treble clef that I listed here: clarinet, tenor sax, trumpet. Alto sax uses the treble clef. Um, the French horn often uses treble clef, but sometimes uses bass clef. Flute, treble clef. Oboe, treble clef. Bassoon, often bass clef. Sometimes the tenor clef. Trombone, bass clef. Sometimes the tenor clef. Tuba, bass clef. Violin, treble, viola, alto clef, cello, bass clef, sometimes tenor clef, the bass, bass clef. It's a quick cheat sheet on what clefs are used for each instrument. Then determining the octave, we just have to think about it this way. If we say this is our concert key, the alto saxophone is a bigger instrument, so for them to play that same note, it's going to be higher for them. So this would be the correct octave. It actually transposes up a major six from concert to alto sax. How this, these, this ability to transpose was something that was common knowledge for and training for musicians so that they could play any instrument, any key, any any time and transpose that very easily. So let's take as an, as an example this part writing example we just did and instead of having it for piano Let's pick instruments that have the appropriate range. And range is something you'll have to you can look up online. Um, let's put French horn, which is a, a, a medium instrument, medium pitch level instrument. Let's make that. So we'll have soprano. We'll be let's pick B flat clarinet for our alto. Voice, let's take our E flat alto saxophone. So that'll be treble clef as well. For our tenor, let's use the French horn. So that will be, let's use, uh, uh, well, if we're using, let's use treble clef for now. And then for our bass voice, Let's use uh, let's use the trombone. If I ask you to say, 
Here's our concert example. Write out the parts for these different instruments. Well, the trombone part is easy. It's in a concert key. There's no transposition. We just write out exactly what we have had before. But we just write it out on a single staff, so our stem direction is a little different. It's our standard follows standard stem direction rules. So there we go. Uh, Let me, let me make this a little clearer. We would have E, C, A, E, B, E. And that would be our trombone part. Our clarinet part, instead of being in the key of E minor, we go up a whole step. It'll be an F sharp minor. We analyze it, it goes five. Six, scale degree six is what, these are the numbers I'm saying. Three, two, one. So that's how we would write it out for our B flat clarinet. Our alto saxophone, instead of being in E minor, it's going to be in C sharp minor. So we're going, um, this is scale degree one. So scale degree one, 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 down to the leading left tone, which is B sharp, jumping down to the fifth of the key, scale degree. So that's how we would write it out for alto saxophone. Now the French horn, which is an instrument we haven't transposed yet, So when a French horn sees a written C, it sounds like an F. Which would mean if we're going from concert key to that, we need to go up a perfect fifth. So if we're in E minor, now we need to be in B minor. And this is a G, up a fifth would be a D, it's also the third of our key, so D, D, E, you can also just look at, you know, following the scale and jumping back down to your original note. So. Being aware of how you're going to transpose the key signature, and then simply analyzing it in terms of scale degrees. And you just can look and it's like going up and down, up, up and down scale. So repeat the note, go up, 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 jump down. Any accident, if you transpose the key signature, you know you don't have to change any accidentals because it's covered in your key signature. If there's an accidental in the original, you'll need to make a modification and put an accidental in what you transpose. And there you go. You've now transposed this four-part example that you figured out for a chamber ensemble of clarinet, alto sax, French horn, and trombone. And you give them each their individual part. They'll play it, and it'll come together, and it'll sound great. Thank you.